Hello, I am Lizzie with Long Distance Gamers. We are a group of friends who play games remotely due to us living in different states. Today I am talking about Tungaroo. What do I think about it? And more importantly, how do we play it remotely? Now before we get started, there are two different sides. The random side, which controls the game, they do have a copy for sure, and they play the game mostly like normal. The remote side may or may not have a copy of the game, we will be going over how the remote side sets up and how the remote side plays. So this is how the remote side sets the game up. The random side will determine which ones of these come out and in what order. We also have numbered each of the islands so that they are easier to refer to. For each of the nomad tiles, we respond to them by what their characteristics are. So for instance, this is a woman, white necklace, woman, black necklace, and woman shell necklace. We also have the man with the yellow necklace, man with the purple, and man with the mat. The remote side will have these set up in different stacks according to their characteristics, so that way they are easily able to be pulled out. When you are telling what is set up, you will say island one, for instance, is the man with the purple, and he requires a fish, a shell, and a coconut. If that is not a unique set of requirements, we would then go on to the second thing and describe what that action is. If that is not unique, then we would go on to the third item. Rarely do we ever have to go past the first. Once everyone is set up and we have the ships on the board, which we specify where we are placing our ships based on the island location. For instance, this is Island 2 and Island 6. So my ship is between Island 2 and Island 6. Likewise, between 9 and 8 and three and seven. Then we go ahead and start playing the game. So everyone decides what card they want to play from their hand and then we will say when we are done. Once everyone has said that they are done, we then reveal what we have chosen. So for instance, Brixy chose the chief, Kitty chose the worker, and I chose the trader. So Kitty gets an extra die and Brixy gets to maintain first player. Mine is I would get to do a trader action at one of the islands that I have one of my people on. However, I don't have a person out, so I lose that action. We then go ahead and start taking actions with Brooksy being the first player. He can either deploy one of his dice to this island or this island to get resources. So this one needs four to six to get a clam. This one needs four to six to get a coconut. Considering he is trying really hard to get these fish though, he's going to want to try to utilize this. So he needs a one or a two or one or a four to get these two fish. So he could send this four over to here and then get two fish. And then that would be his action. Kitty is trying to get a coconut and a pearl. So she would have to be able to get this shell to convert it to a coconut. And then she could also get this pearl. So for the shell, she can go ahead and put her six there and then she would get a shell. And then it would be my turn. I am needing a shell and a coconut, which I can go ahead and get coconuts from here. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my six die right there and grab up a coconut. And then this continues so on and so forth until someone can claim a tile, for instance. So we will go back to Brixby is he able to so he will go ahead and come down here with this six and get a pearl kitty is still needing a pearl so she will go ahead and deploy her two over to here and grab the pearl and then i am needing a shell so i can deploy my two over here to get a shell. Then we go back to Brooksy's turn. He has one last die. So he can go ahead and place it here. Send his pearl over to here and then get two fish. So his next turn, he will be able to claim this because you only need three fish to claim that. Kitty, on the other hand, she wants a coconut. So she needs to convert that shell to a coconut. So she will go ahead and deploy a die here to trade this shell 
for a coconut. And then I need a shell and a coconut. So I can go ahead and use my very last die to recruit. And then I will be able to place my monuments on the island and take this tile. And I can place it right there. And then I get a choice of what to bring in. So then I could choose which one of these to bring in. I'm gonna go ahead and bring her in because this guy will give me two points for every monument that I have. And I already have a monument here, so I wouldn't want to claim him right off the rip. So I'd wanna to go to another island to try to get him there, hopefully after someone has already brought him in. And then the random side will determine what goes into the new eight island. So they would say guy Matt. So I would have the three and then they would say double pearl, for instance. Then we just place the double pearl. And then that continues on until the end of game is triggered, which is when these tiles run out. And then you count up your points and you see who the winner is. That is how you play Tungaroo remotely. As you can see, with all sides having a copy, it is a very easy transition for table to screen. If only one side has a copy, you are having to describe a little bit more what everything is and taking pictures every time something on the board changes is a very good idea. What do I think about the game? It is actually a little bit crunchier than we first thought it would be. The rule book made it seem like it would be a great beginner family level game, but it's actually more of a midweight level game. The artwork and the feel makes you think that it's gonna be easier, but the decisions that you make throughout gameplay is where it really develops. And while I enjoyed that, it was a little bit too mathy for Brooksy to really fully enjoy it. So just be aware that it's not as light as it appears. I do like how the dice are all the same for all the players every round. So that way, even if you do have a really bad roll, at least everybody is in the same boat. And I also like that once you are done with your card, you pass it to the next player for them to use in the next round. So as you can see, you might not have a solid one through five. It's so like I would have to choose between two ones, a two, a three, and a five. So that makes it a little bit more unique, especially if you see one of your opponents going for a fish strategy. You wouldn't want to be playing the fisherman for yourself because then you're going to be giving the fisherman to them. And then that would just help them win. So do you really want to play that card or can you choose a different one? I really thoroughly enjoyed Tungaroo. It is actually a nine and a half out of 10 for me. I loved the entire crunchiness throughout the game. The only things it got was for slight production issues with the board. They don't exactly line up over here and you can see the tape lines, but the gameplay far exceeds the little minor issues that I have with that. And the card quality is very nice, linen finish, yay. Very happy with that. And then for the deluxe components, I absolutely love the boats, the monuments, everything. The only issue that I have is the monuments that are printed are the monuments that are in the base game. So you see a flat surface and just have to remember that it is your nice big chunky little guy. But that's a minor quibble. This game is fantastic and I absolutely love it. I hope you enjoy, have fun, and be you. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to hear from you.